Hello everyone, this is the CS Revelation. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a, an SQL select statement. Uh, we're going to learn the structure of a select statement and all the different components that make up a select statement. Uh, and we're going to use it to fetch data from a database. Now, uh, in the previous videos, I showed you how to create the following database. Uh, it's composed of two tables, the country table and the city table. So we have two tables and there is a relationship between them, which is based on this foreign key country ID uh, that is a reference to this primary key country's ID. Um, okay, so let's get started. So now the syntax or the structure for a select statement is the following. So select the keyword select, and then we have the columns, right? So we're going to mention the columns that we want to select. So there's this a column one, column two, and so on. So you're going to list the columns that you want to view from a certain table. And you use the from keyword here to mention the table from which you're going to be getting your data. Uh, this is the simplest or this is the minimum for a select statement is that you use the select keyword and then you mention the columns that you want to list or view from a certain table. So you use the from keyword and to uh, mention the table that you're getting the data from. Example, so say we want to uh, select everything, all the columns from the country's ID. Now there are two ways to do this. It's either that you say select, let's say country ID. Now you mentioned the first column, then the country name and comma, you put the country code. So now uh, you separate these columns with commas and then you say from country table. Okay, so this is the minimum to get uh, to run a select statement. So this is going to get you a view of the country table, but with these three columns listed. So let's run this and see its outcome. Now the outcome here, as you see, we have country's ID, we have country name and country code. Those are the columns that we mentioned here. And this data is coming from the country table. Now you see, we did not eliminate any of the rows. We've listed all the rows that are in the country table because we did not uh, add any constraints. So we said list all from the country table. Now there's a second way to do the same thing, which is an easier way. If you want all the columns, then you simply use a wildcard, which is the star or the asterisk. You say select star from table name, which is country. So now this is going to get you all the columns. Even if you don't mention the column names, this is going to get you all the columns. So we got the same results. That's because uh, the star here is a wildcard that um, basically says list all the columns. Now in the first query here, we mentioned all the columns. Now, let's suppose that you're not interested in all these columns. You're only interested in the country name. So you simply uh, mention the column name that you're interested in. So I'm only interested in the one column, which is country name. Now notice now the result set is only listing the country names and it's not listing any of the other columns. So that is, that is the most basic uh, structure for a select statement. Now, uh, if we're now thinking of eliminating some of these rows, uh, or maybe we want only some of those rows to appear, uh, then we need to use a where clause. So say, for example, now this is all the rows in the country stable. Say, for example, what we want is to eliminate, or maybe we want only one row to be listed, and that is for, let's say, the country Spain. Now we know the ID of the Spain is six countries ID. So what you want to do here is just simply add a where clause and then put the condition. So basically you're going to have select all the columns from the country table where the following condition is met. And the condition is a country ID, for example, equal to six. So, What's going to happen here is that Oracle is going to 
go to all these rows and see which ones satisfy this condition, which is country ID equals six. And once it finds one that satisfies that condition, it's going to return all the columns for that specific row. So now we run this, notice only one row is returned, which is the one that satisfies the condition with country ID equals six. Okay, so now uh, we see how we can add a condition. Uh, to uh, filter out the result sets. Of course, the conditions are um, based on your requirements. So you can have an equality condition, you can have an inequality, say, for example, you wanted all the countries that have, uh, let's say, an ID that is greater than three. So you could say greater than three. Uh, of course, you could do greater than, greater than or equal, any of those conditions that you have in mind. Now, this is going to list more than one row. Uh, it is listing all the countries that satisfy the condition of having a country ID greater than three. And notice the four rows satisfy that condition. Uh, now, the condition here doesn't have to be always comparing a numeric value. You can actually compare also uh, or use a condition that is composed of values that are varchar type. So, for example, let's say we are interested in the countries uh, that have a country code, let's say SRV or HRV, right? So this is uh, our country table. So we want the SRV and HRV, okay? So this is a composite condition. So we want the country code to equal, we want the country code to be equal to, so this is a um, varchar, has to be in quotes, SRB or right so we're saying or because we it's either the SRB or HRV now uh, do not make this mistake saying equal uh, let's say SRB or HRV this is not going to work because usually that's what we think is the logic but you this is not going to work because what you want to do is saying country code equals SRB or country code equals uh, HRV. So you want to repeat that whole condition. Okay, so now when we run this, uh, we should be getting two rows. Okay, so one for Serbia, one for Croatia. You can also use logical operator and uh, that is, uh, you know, if your logic uh, or your condition is uh, once to one two conditions to be satisfied so therefore you want to use the and uh, logical operator an example of that say for example we're interested in all the countries uh, that have uh, an id greater than three and or let's say an id that is less than three and a country code that is equal to SRB. So that is going to be country ID, let's say less than three. And so we're going to say and uh, country code equals SRB. So there's there should be only one row that satisfies this condition and that is this one row. So the country ID is greater than two and the country code is SRB. So both conditions are satisfied because you have an AND operator. So both sides of this condition must be true in order for uh, this whole condition to be true or to be met. So it's not enough that the country ID is less than three uh, to have a row returned, right? So I can change this to HRV. And notice that um, I may not get anything, right? So if I run this, notice no data found. No data found because there's no uh, row that satisfy both conditions. Let's see. So if we're interested in just these, uh, all the countries that have uh, a country ID less than three, we get Serbia and Germany, right? But if we're interested in uh, countries that also have a country code HRV, 
it is not in this list. So therefore, it does not satisfy both conditions, okay? So that's going to give us no data found. Now, uh, something very important to uh, really go over, which is the process of the execution of the select statement. How does the database management system execute the query, the select statement that uh, you have? Now, uh, when understanding the order uh, of execution, you will be able to generate or develop select statements even easier. So the process of creating a select statement becomes much easier. Now, usually Oracle uh, or any database management system, uh, the first thing that gets to be executed from the select statement is the from part. So first thing is that the table must be located. So which one of these tables in the database are we uh, getting the data from? So the from part here gets to be executed first. And the next thing is to uh, execute the where clause. So the where clause is going to filter out uh, result sets. So it's going to eliminate some rows and keep some rows, keep only the rows that satisfy that condition. And the last thing that's going to be executed is the select part, which basically deciding on the columns that will be uh, displayed. So the first thing that gets to be executed again is the from part, which is locating the table. Once we locate the table where we get the data from, we decide on the rows. So what rows to get from that table. And once we have done that, we move to deciding on what columns to display. So that is the order of execution of a simple select statement. Now, this is the end of this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'm going to show you how to use the order by to sort the result sets. Okay, so till the next one.